Well, greetings once again. Prophet Tom here from Brisbane, Australia. And what a joy it is to come and share the powerful word of God with you again today. Today, we're continuing to look at the seven I am's of Christ in the New Testament. And the one that we will look at today is I am the light of the world. You know, this week, the world is celebrating Halloween. It just so happens I, that Halloween falls on my 49th wedding anniversary. Uh, when we got married, we never even heard of Halloween, but uh, it has spread throughout Australia. It has spread throughout the world. It is something that was birthed, to my understanding, in the United States. Uh, but it is a great opportunity to share on I am the light of the world when we think of Halloween, which is covered in darkness. You know, yesterday a pastor uh, put an item on the internet uh, which basically said this, that we as Christians should allow our ch children to celebrate Halloween. The tragedy of what he's saying is he needs to change the words and say that we as Christians should allow our children to be ensnared and controlled by Satan, because that is exactly what happens. Halloween, as he said, is not a fun time. He said it's a fun time. It is not. Halloween is a time where Satan opens its fangs to ensnare every person in darkness, to take them deeper into darkness. And this is what we're going to open up today. Now, if we have our Bibles, open your Bible to John chapter 9. And I'm going to read a few verses from this. And this particular passage in the Bible shows us uh, how to bring, how to come out of darkness. The illustration that Jesus used here was that of a blind man. So let me read a few verses. Verse 1. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, Christ uses situations to bring a revelation and a truth across to us, his believers, and also to the individual receiving the instruction or the miracle. And we see this here. And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. That is the purpose that God did in the three years that he walked this earth with his disciples. The miracles they experienced, the miracles they saw was to open their eyes to the light and revelation of Jesus Christ. So let us read on a little further. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now we may say, well, Christ is not in the world anymore. Well, if that is the case, and if that is your statement, that shows that you're living in darkness uh, because we can show hundreds of scriptures which will inform us and tell us that Christ is living within us. And so if we're his believers, then we are also his light. So when you walk down to the shops or when you go into your workplace or when you go into a meeting or into an environment, uh, you're not just going into that place, uh, but you are going, as the scriptures tells us, you are going as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Uh, you are going as his light. Uh, this is exactly what God said to Moses in Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1, and he says this, uh, that when you stand before Pharaoh, it is though you were God standing before Pharaoh. When we stand today before darkness, uh, it is as though it is God or Christ, uh, who is the light of the world, standing in front of that situation. And that should give us strength, that should give us encouragement, that should lead us 
into total victory. But let us read on. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground, made clay of the slava, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, is not this the one who sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like he. But he said, I am he. Now listen, verse 10. Therefore they said to him, how were your eyes opened? And that's what God wants to do with us today. God wants to open our eyes. God wants to take us into light, into revelation. We're living in darkness. Darkness is all around us. We see it this week. You walk the streets of the neighborhood where you live. You will see the signs of Halloween, cobwebs going all over the place, you know, skulls of people and so forth. It is all related and to do with darkness. And the purpose and the goal behind this celebration is to see you possessed by demons themselves. But let me show you some of the results. And so we say, you know, what is darkness? And this is what we'll look at this week and next week. Uh, what is darkness? What are the results of darkness? How do we move out of darkness? And then when we move out of darkness, where do we go? Let me give you a picture of the effects of darkness within our society. This following illustration opens the window of this. From the 1st of January, 2016, through to the 1st of November, 2016, that is 10 months or around 300 days. These statistics were taken in America and shows us the effect and result of darkness. 1,331 people were killed through domestic violence. 10,475 people were killed to gun violence. 30,814 people died as a result of drunk driving. 38,984,000 people took their own lives, suicide. 22,790 people died due to drug abuse. One million people, one million babies were aborted, were killed. One million babies in 10 months in the United States. 600,000 people died because of cancer. That is 1,704,394 deaths or more alarming, that is 5,681 deaths every day in the United States of America in 2016. Now, that is just showing America. If we were to multiply this throughout the world, what would be the figure that we would come up with? Truly, we are living in a dark age. If we were to perhaps, and I don't have figures for this, but if we were to bring all of the world in, including the war in that 10 months time throughout the world, we would have a figure of over 100,000 people being killed in some form throughout this 10 month period. Every day, 100,000 people being killed. That's mind boggling. That shows you the effects of darkness. That's what Christ is talking about in John 10, 10, when he talks about what the thief wants to do. If we look at our world, we see that it walks in three kinds of darkness. First, there is mental 
and intellectual darkness. And this is a huge problem today. From young children right through to old people, there are those taking their own lives. The, you know, the, the amount of people that are on, uh, on, on depressive pills and so forth, we see that Satan is destroying the minds of men and women. Secondly, we see moral darkness. Uh, I am amazed as a now a senior and to see the decline in our moral states within our country of Australia alone, let alone not looking at the world. In the last 10 years, the way Australia morally has declined, it, it concerns you in the natural where we are going. And then thirdly, we see the spiritual darkness. But you know, Christ came. Hallelujah. Christ came. He came to bring light to the mental and intellectual darkness. He came to bring light into a moral society. He came to bring light and to open our spiritual eyes so that we can see the light of Jesus Christ. And so what is spiritual darkness? Spiritual darkness is the state of a person who is living apart from God. The Old Testament book of Isaiah in prophesying of the Messiah speaks of a deep spiritual darkness that enveloped the people. Let us go to Isaiah chapter nine. And in Isaiah chapter nine, we have a beautiful verse or verses. It says here in Isaiah 9 and verse 2, it says, the people who walk in darkness, he's talking about society, the people who have no directions. I don't know about you, but, you know, sometimes I've gone into a strange room where I've been staying and it's in total darkness. I don't know uh, where the light switch is. And so I walk into that room trying to find the light switch. And I can't find that light switch, you know. And so you're, you're feeling around. Where is it? Where is it? So I can see the light. And as you're looking for that light switch, if you're walking around, you may hit the cover. You may fall over a table. You may do something else because you cannot see. And that is the condition of our world today. The people in our world are walking around blind. They cannot see the obstacles of Satan. They cannot see that Satan is not there to benefit them, but to destroy them. You know, on Thursday in the evening time, millions of people throughout the world will go house to house, knocking on the doors to get lollies. They'll take their children with them, opening their children to this darkness. People have and put out displays in a yard with with skulls and with with weird uh, things like this ugly looking creatures uh, and 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 young we are, as parents we are exposing our young people to this darkness uh, and that's what this verse is saying it's saying um, the people who walk in darkness but listen i like this bit have seen a great light you know we may look at our country. We may look at the situation of our country. We may look at Halloween this week. We may look at these things and we may throw our hands in the air and we may say, God, God, when will you do something? When will you turn this situation around? But you know, I read an article the other day, which I've spoke on in one of my other segments. And uh, you know, there have been billions and billions of people in the last 2000 years that have found Christ as their Lord and Savior. They have seen the light. That's what this is talking about. I want to tell you a story, a true story. There was a professor in the United States, and this professor and his wife were both atheists. And, uh, and so they were taking a team of students over to France for a conference of which the professor was one of the key speakers. And this conference was to do with uh, proving that Christianity was false. Uh, and so they traveled over to France from America and they'd been there a couple of days and had a couple of days in the conference, did a little look around 
And all of a sudden, the professor became very, very sick. I, I don't remember the disease that hit his body, but they rushed him to hospital. And with this particular disease, uh, there was no, the, there was only a special kind of cure for it. And you had to begin to treat it within five hours. Uh, but the people that could do this in the hospital uh, were away and they couldn't be contacted. And the hours went by and this man sunk deeper and deeper and deeper into darkness. Uh, death was holding its mouth open to swallow him, to ensnare him and to take him out of earth. Time went by and still no help come. And then it came to the point uh, where this man did pass from this earth uh, into the next. And, and as he passed from this earth, this is a true story. As he passed from this earth, he saw himself out of his body. His body was laying on the bed. His wife was beside him in the bed. And yet, you know, here he was. And so he looked uh, and, and he saw his body, but he looked the other way and he could see these people in the distance. Uh, and he began to walk towards these people thinking it was the nurses. Uh, and the more he began to walk that way, The more he began to walk that way, the darker it got. And he got to the point that he could not see anymore. People were crawling out to him. People were grabbing him, but he couldn't see. And he turned around and in the distance, even though it was totally black, in the distance, he could see a little light. And, and But yet, you know, all these people trying to grab him saying, come, come, come. And they were dragging him into hell itself. But he turned around, as I said, and he could see this little light and he, he began to go that way. And, and as he began to go that way, these creatures began to grab hold of him and pulling him back. And even though he was an atheist in the dark, he cried out, he said, Jesus. And then it was like they let go and he began to go back and go back and he continued to cry out Jesus. And he continued to cry out Jesus. And he continued to cry out Jesus till he found himself back in his bed, his eyes open, and he was totally healed. He looked at his wife. He told his wife what had happened, and she didn't believe him. And, you know, as the time goes by and, and time passed, they're now back in America, and, you know, he becomes a believer, begins to go to church, and his wife says to him, if you go to that church anymore, I'm walking out and leaving you. He says, I can't let go of God. He brought me back from death. And so she walked out and left him. He continued. He went on to uh, college himself and studied the Bible and, and became ultimately became a pastor within a church. And today he pastors a thriving church for the almighty God. You see, that's what this verse is talking about. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. This professor saw a light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. This is what happened to that professor. He saw a dim little light. He began to walk towards that light and his life was transformed in a moment of time. And let me read on. And uh, you have multiplied multiplied the nations and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of the harvest. As men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of the burden. You have broken the yoke of darkness. You have destroyed the yoke of darkness and you've opened our eyes to light. And verse six shows us how that happened. It says, for unto us. A child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful. 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 Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. 
from that time forward, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That word there, the zeal of the Lord of hosts. We can read it this way. The zeal of the Lord of God's armies will perform this. Our light is Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but we'll pick this up next week from this point. Uh, but our light is Jesus Christ. Our light is Jesus Christ. Let me leave you with one verse as I close in prayer. It says this in John 1 and verse 5. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. This is the life-giving message. We heard him share it, and it's still ringing in our ears. We now repeat his words to you. Listen. God is pure light. You know, in the Western world, we have different voltage of lights in a house. If you have a 20 voltage light, it may give you a semi-darkness light. If you have a 100 voltage light, it'll give you like pure light in that room. You see, if you look behind my screen, you'll see the fan, the shadow of the fan spinning around in this room that tells us that there's not pure light in this room but it says here in verse 5 that god is pure light you will never even find a trace of darkness in him darkness is deception darkness is defeat Darkness is failure. Darkness is sickness. Darkness is rejection. Darkness is anxiety. Darkness is cancer. Darkness is, is everything satanic. But it says in God, he is pure light and no darkness can be found. In verse 6 says this, if we claim that we share life with him, but keep walking in the realm of darkness, we're fooling ourselves and not living the truth. Is there darkness in your life today? Do you live by fear? Do you live by anxiety? Does the condition of this world rattle your faith? Focus on Jesus. He is the light of the world. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the joy of being able to share this word. We thank you for the revelations that you're bringing out through, your, through the names of God. And this name is one of the most powerful that I am. You are Christ Jesus. You are the light to the world. You're the light to the situation here in Australia. You are the light to the situation here in my body. Take away all darkness, almighty God. For everyone listening to us today, take away their darkness, I pray, almighty God and let your light glow within them. Now, there's a reason for that, church. And we'll pick this up next week. But you're his representatives here. So you've got to shine with his light. Well, God bless you. This is Prophet Tom. It's been a joy being with you today. For those that normally tune in with me on Thursday, uh, we won't be doing the broadcasting. Uh, it is um, our wedding anniversary, 49 years. And I'll be taking my wife out for dinner. So we may, we'll pick that up again next week. Uh, but, um, and we'll look at spirit beings or spirit life on Thursdays. But it's been a joy again being with you today. God bless you. Until next week, Prophet Tom here saying we love you in Jesus' name.